uh, we're going to start with some some spiky goodness. You know, not the bad type of growth, not that gross growth that you get um, when you get an itch somewhere. This is like the, the cool cool growth. jump right into 3ds max and here's my dude my naked dude so first off the bat which is pretty important if you're going to follow along uh, just so you don't uh, fuck up the values it's going to be very frustrating if you don't use the same unit scale as i do so we're going to do centimeters this time one unit is a centimeter okay make sure that is good or else your units will be all whack need you to make a cylinder and uh, we're gonna line it up to the guy yeah so it's about 180 so make 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 an object that's at units at 180 all right so you want to keep that in there uh, if you so please just for reference um, off the bat I'm gonna start off with let's get my uh, a layer here okay this is this this is gonna be the foundation of this effect we're gonna do number underscore oh five underscore we're gonna do um uh curves start off the bat here okay uh let's do uh, uh, uh go over to this guy shapes nerves curves c v curve which is my favorite uh turn this guy off here uh start at origin. You're gonna do shit. Hold the hold shift so it's it's nice and straight, right? You can go right that or else. So hold shift. We want to do uh, drag that up. Two, uh, three, four. I like to just do about five here and right click to exit that. Okay. So we got a nerves curve. You get your points. You can see how nice and flexible it is. It's really nice. But this is gonna be our base, dude. This is our base driver. Here, this is our main main curve. Okay, we're gonna go to top view. All right, we're gonna go to uh, create tab. Let's go back to splines and we're gonna do a helix. Okay, so drag and hold from origin, just kind of drag out eh, about that big. All right, and you just wanna move your mouse up again. Notice how you see the height is still moving, it's not done creating yet. And like hit uh, another one. Uh, another click and then you got one more click drag it out so it's three clicks until it's done and about that's good okay so you can see perspective all right swirling around so we want to line this up to the height okay a little bit further is okay uh, we want to wrap this thing around go to turns I'm gonna wrap this thing around uh, five uh, about maybe that three three is good uh, radius two we want to just shrink down to close to zero right okay uh, bias is pretty cool um, let's keep the bias towards the low end so you want to shove that down to the negative okay I'm gonna want this kind of you know like a like a like a cobra all right so we got our first curve wrapping around there. Um, select this guy and hit Control V and copy it. Okay, so we've got another one, and we're gonna do counterclockwise. Okay, so right now we got both of them wrapping around, clockwise, counterclockwise. So the other one, let's do some, just give it some, uh, some uh, another type of variation. Maybe give it some more turns, a little more turns. We want to just kind of create a. A nice variance of stuff wrapped around this. Uh, adjust the bias just a bit, and then maybe the rate, the, the the base radius. Shrink that down just a bit here. Yeah. Okay. All right. Just do Control V one more time. We're gonna do three of them. Uh, I'm gonna go back to clockwise. And let's again give it maybe a little bit taller, um, widen the base a bit, a little more turns, and I'm actually gonna rotate this around a bit here. Maybe like 180, 
Okay. A little more turns. Do, 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 do. Actually, maybe less turns. Eh, no, about the same. That, uh, so you want to distribute that kind of swirly goodness around the, the main guy enough. So, all right, so if we go to the side view, okay, we don't have like an awkward offset of a side that's got more twirliness. Um, I'm actually going to take my main guy, go to curve A. I'm going to take this curve. I'm going to pull it up just, just a bit, maybe right there. That's good. Cool. So, 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 what we want to do is I'm going to take, I'm going to select all three of these curves here. And so you got helix one, two, three. Let's save it. I'm going to go to a modifier. Oh man, my hard drive is slow. Uh, modifier, uh, path to form, path to form. And make sure it's the world space modifier, not the path to form uh, that's local, local space. So. World space, remember. All right, so pick path. We're going to pick the main path here, okay? All right, we got that. Uh, we're going to do pick path and then move to path. we got to pick them individually. Helix 2, move to path. Helix 3, move to path. All right. And for the sake of it, I'm going to kind of isolate these colors here. Select these helix. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's do that and that, just so we know who's boss, right? Select these guys and freeze them, okay? Just so we don't have to select them. So now we got this guy selected. And I can select the points here. And you notice, wonderful, wonderful, they all follow each other. Um, this way, you know. So that's the idea. We want to make we want to make one master curve that all these these helixes kind of follow swirliness, right? Right. So that's pretty cool. Next step is let's uh, kind of make a base here. Go to splines. Go to circle. And then drag something out. So this will be our main controller guy. All right. We can even turn on in the viewport. You need to see it, right? I'm gonna turn that off. Uh, but I'm gonna parent all these guys to this base here in a second. But before I do that, again, uh, let's turn the cylinder off. Let's go to this view. Select the main guy, the main center curve. Let's mass name this. Let's rename it Master Master Curve. Okay. Side view, this is pretty cool. Uh, we're gonna go to modifiers. We're going to do spline IK control. This is pretty badass. Uh, make sure you go into layers. We're gonna hit new layer, number it, go um, uh, 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 curve control. Z. All right. So select this guy again. We got spline IK control modifier. This is awesome. I love using this thing. Um, uh, well, you know, it's it's simple, but it's uh, it's effective and it's great, great for things like this. All right, select the master curve. Go to spline IK, and we're gonna do create helpers. Uh, before you do that, we're gonna go link all to root, and then create helpers. Boom. Right. Right, so you can grab these helpers and oh, there you go. It's like a nice little bone system. Boom. So that's nice. And since we link them all to the the um, what's it called? Link all to root. So the root guy, they're all gonna move with each other. So since that guy's linked, I'm just gonna link this to the spline, the circle here. So it's a better, easier way to. To move this guy around right all right so we have our nice setup here this is a nice spline setup you know obviously like this guy kind of uh, I, I, I molded it to a certain path and made the camera follow it in a certain ways the goal is to make it as controllable as possible okay cool so we got that set up uh, next we're gonna create our follower dudes 
So those do followers. Nice um, original, very unique scientific engineer type name. Followers. Follow, am I an idiot? Followers. That's right. I basically have, yeah, no, what do I have? I've got one main guy here, and then all three of them follow, kind of wrapping around. Let's just make some simple followers here. Uh, I'm gonna use I'm gonna use a um, pyramid. No, uh, cone. Okay, cone. Uh, turn smooth off. Just make it six side pyramid. Um, radius. Let's do like ten. Height. 35, nope, that's too big, 3, 15, something like that, okay. I'm going to color this guy red, that's the main one. So he's going to follow the uh, the master guy. So just simply animation constraints, path constraint, nothing nothing crazy. Okay, now since we're starting at 1,000, I'm starting at 1,000, which is a good habit to get into because the industry starts at 1,000, not zero people, okay. So it's a good good habit to get into. I'm gonna open up, I'm gonna go graph editor, new track view. Little layout, this guy here. Okay. So since max is kind of stupid this way, it's always creates its curve at zero. Drag it to to uh, your start frame. Or if you're stubborn and you want to keep it at zero, go ahead. But this is how I work. All right, so we got our uh, curve here, linear, right? When you do uh, constraint, path constraints, it defaults to linear. Fix that, you, you know, you can't create any Bezier curves here. To fix that, select your keys, and you got your, your drop down here. Right click on the linear float option here, drop down, go to assign controller, and Bezier float, okay. Then select your keys and then voila, there you go. Fun fact. Okay, so now we got a nice Bezier float. Ease in, ease out. So same thing. I'm gonna take this guy, I'm gonna control V, copy this, and color it green. Save it and just go to the path constraint, delete the path, add this guy. Right? Boom, we got him following. And since this is not, the idea is to keep it, uh, give it a direction. So I'm going to follow. And uh, let's play with the axis. Yeah, the Z axis. Just find the axis that it works, right? Okay, so these, this is following now. And you're going to want to do it to, whoops. We're going to want to do that to that guy too. So follow and then Z. Yeah. Yeah, because once we. Oh yeah, and at, by now we've got controllers and other stuff setting up so we can just take the curves and pretty much freeze everything, right? Let to select it. So just select these. Take this guy, control V, copy, and then take delete the path and select this guy here, okay? Control V one more time and delete the path and add this guy. All right, there we go. I'm gonna hide the curves actually real quick. Okay, so we have a nice, we got three guys following the path. Take the curves, da -da. you know, so we can, now we can adjust it however we want. version up here take the controller all right so now we have show all right let's get rid of these nasty artifacts um, okay, select the the gnarly uh, splines. 
go to modifiers we'll go to normalize normalize spline boom look at that uh, segment length so you want to play with that uh, I think the lower value creates more segments that's why it's it interpolates um, how it pleases because it has uh, a large number of, of points in between themselves so you raise that value up you can smooth it out there you go so maybe 15 20 maybe like 10 I kind of like to keep that gnarly gnarliness boom all right so now let's uh, let's create this particle system Ooh, it's, it's just oh man it's just fun to yeah play around oh it's so satisfying man okay so here we go let's get right to it uh, I got a lot to cover so I'll go as fast as I can and be as most efficient so let's hide the um, curves let's uh, let's get one visible here so we could test on this so as always let's make a TP layer here okay uh, particle systems thinking boom boom let's center it da, da, da. Right, go to properties open to properties and like always Let's configure our UI to our pleasing. So 1001, user defined. Remember, start on 1000. It's a good habit to get into. Studios will appreciate it uh, if you know that. Um, turn this off. Da, da, da. What else do we got? I think that's good. Uh, yeah, all right, there we go. All right, to start off, we will um and let's just make a couple necessary let's do a group control g so this will be the uh spikes spike um spike growth spike grow there you go that's our main one always want to make a main um uh, group to contain everything under always good management okay so group here Group another here. I'll name this later. The idea is, like always, as I say, just move as far forward as you can and then take two steps back later. So, you know, you can always rename this group down the line. So we want to, uh, let's start off with this. Uh, let's leave it right there. Um, make a dynamic set. Same thing. Spike. Grow. Goro. Grow. Um, dome, dome, dome. Okay. So let's uh, let's just as always cache zero. You know, just keep a nice consistent um, hierarchy build no matter what you do. Cache two. This is what I like to start off with, right? So you got your main main uh, guy here. Anything under that you want to continue on. So um, underneath here, uh, underscore birth. Right, anything that we create, import, emit, we want to start off here. Uh, this is our containment, right? This is where we're going to keep everything that we make initially, right? Import. So uh, off the bat, and then underscore represents uh, it is a it's a dynamic set that holds other dynamic sets. Um, that's how I do it. So let's start with the first one, import. Okay, so we're gonna do object of article. Okay, let's do this as um oh name it um what do we what do we make? We made uh followers. I'm gonna rename this to cones. That's easier to followers is too convoluted, right? <laughs> Alright, um let's name it uh Zero zero cones. So, off the bat, we'll do. Hmm, underscore zero zero. And uh, neutrons. And then I'll make a couple. Uh, I'll, I'll throw a couple groups in here. Uh, I know that I'm gonna. I have multiple emitters cones so 
underneath these get this guy here it'll be zero zero n cone a one one or a which one do i like better i like one let's do one and same thing cone two cone three Cone three. <clears throat> this microphone's getting in the way of my typing. Da, 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 da. Let's see how many do we have. One, two, three, four. All right, we got four. Four for now. You can add as many as you want, but for now, four. All right, four. Cool. So we got that set up. Cones. All right. I'm going to hide the curves real quick. So we got and a TP just for a second. All right, we're going to save this. All right, let's get these in our system. So we got these things moving. Let's see which one I choose here. Okay, it looks like it's cone four, right? Okay, let's choose that bad boy. Pick this guy, cone four. Okay, object to particle, we need that. And instance shape. Well, we don't really need the shape, but I'm just gonna, nah, we don't really need it. We do not need the shape. Um, I just need the position and tracking value. So, now we got that data in there. Um, hide that to turn TP on end. Yeah, actually just show the shape so I can see it. Cone four, go to uh, none, show mesh. Yeah, there it is. Okay. Just so we can confirm. Cool. <clears throat> cool. All right. We got that. All right. Next up is select your birth dynamic set. I'm going to make a trail born. All right. Uh, da -da. Uh, let's do uh, neutrons. Actually, I'm just for the sake of this, I'm going to rename it cones, just so it's a lot more easy to. Uh, and underscore cones. Okay. Zero, zero is the first uh, containment, right? So next one, I'll add, you know, if, if, I, if I may, zero, one. That just lets me know I'm in this containment. Um, N is for neutron, so this cone is moving at its own speed, at its own pace. I'm not affecting it by any outside forces. I could even set it to that if I may. But I'm just importing it and tracking its position, right? So that's, and then obviously the last uh, part of it is the, the given name, right? So. This is how I manage things. So let's uh, get right into it. Let's do add a threshold. We need our velocity. Boom. Uh, let's add a trail born. T peak. If you could fix that ding every time I hit tab, that would be fantastic. Thank you, Cebus. I gotta talk to him about that. Uh, threshold. So the idea is whenever these, this cone starts to move, it's going to start to birth um, uh, more particles. Okay, so let's put this to like two. And uh, let's see what it's going to do. We need a, um, we need some uh, particle groups. So just like I said, let's do another group. Let's do 01. Uh, this is going to be um, oh, one, a, n, no, a, active, it's going to be affected by forces eventually, all right, <clears throat> and this will be, uh, spikes, spikes, and let's do ticks, uh, let's color it, maybe like a green, and that should be good, okay, pulling out, got that group, Point the trails to spikes. Okay, and cones. All right, so we got something moving. 
Um, I'm going to change the color since we got the cones as green. I'm going to just color this like a orange. I like it. All right. So, Trailborn is cool. Um, uh, it's it's a more much more efficient than uh, adding uh, position born particles. Uh, it creates much nicer consistency of a of particle trail, hence the name Trailborn. So let's do max length, just kind of a large arbitrary number, and distance just put the set to a kind of a low value for now. So the lower value, the closer they get, you can. Am I on? Oh yeah, let's turn this off. Let's see what that looks like. Okay. Yeah, so you can see larger the value, the farther the distance. All right, so let's do one. And add some variation in there and some, I think that's good, yeah. So you can see already, got a nice trail going on here. Change this to dots. Looks cooler. All right, we got that trail, all right? Let's collapse this stuff. Let's do born particle, get that output. I'm gonna say that we're gonna need a memory. We're gonna, we're gonna, we, we have to store a variable, right? So point, you make a memory node connected to cones. But before I store a variable, <clears throat> need to, as always, make a memory node master. So go to spike grow and uh, I will just, I'll plug in a, uh, I'll, I'll, so create the memory master and you keep it there, don't touch it. So, all right, I need to store a velocity, a type of velocity data. Now I need to, I need to access this guy, this cone's velocity, right? He's moving in a certain direction and he's moving at a certain speed and he's also creating these particles based on what I told it to do. But what I also want it to do is I want to say, I, I, I want to link his velocity to the particles that he's creating. So I need, I want to store that data so I can access it later. So what I want to do is create a velocity variable, velocity here. Okay, we're going to do uh, my velocity, name it that, all right? Put it in the input. So we're going to do Da, 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 da. No, we don't want to disconnect this. Okay, we're going to pipe the velocity of the cone, the green guy, into my velocity. And then we're going to put the particle to born particle. So now it's saying, okay, it's saying uh, this guy's like, all right, so I see I'm inputting a each particle ID into my memory. I'm, I'm, I'm remembering that. And also I'm grabbing the the person the the dude who created me in the first place and i'm applying his velocity to to myself so now each of these particles has the velocity data of the master the cone dude okay so that's that's the cool part so now we have that stored as a variable all right that's all we need for now okay we've got this going on this is moving up right and here's the trippy part. Oh man, I love this. Let's 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 uh let's have fun for a minute. Get these uh, curve controls right. Oh shit, watch this. Oh, it's so controllable. Ooh, whoa, look at that. Oh yeah, particles real time. Beautiful. All right, go all the way up, and you can go. Oh shit. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, I love it. Oh, that's sexy. Look at that. <sighs> Let's keep this on the front viewport. Save it. Move forward here. Next up is, let's start to make our system here. So if you can remember, I like to make my birth, uh, everything imported, uh, created. So next up is underscore system. In here, let's start off with uh, an orient. Let's create an orient. Uh, uh, orient. So what we're going to do, 
Let's make it, you know what, before we get into that, because it's going to be kind of weird creating this logic without visually seeing something. So let's make um, spikes. Let's make a shape here. Standard shape. Okay, standard shape. Let's make it a tetra. Okay. All right, we got that tetra, see? <gasps> Oh boy. Okay. And we're going to need a, uh, just a size. All right. I don't know which direction it's hanging in, but we will get there in a minute here. Okay. So this is just for visual reference. We're going to get rid of this later. But what I want to do is I want to access memory, okay, and we're going to grab my velocity and bring it to the output, okay? And then we're going to do an alignment, particle to spikes, we're going to do direction to velocity because we need to access the dude's direction to point our shapes in the direction we so choose. And uh, let's see how this, um, let's do like a 0 0.1, All right? Laziness, and instead of random, we want to do user defined, All right? So as you can see, as of now, let's actually, let's give this some variance here. Turn this down. All right. So you can see they nice and aligned. Now that the, here's the um, here's the cool part, is Trailborn contains that information. So if I were to do a position born, um, they would all be uh, actually. Let's just let's just uh, let's do like that, like that. Let's turn this off. Undo spikes. Let's do per call. So position born like old days, you would need to access this uh, this information. So if I did a particle to this guy, right? So now I have that that data. So now it it points in the right direction. Uh, but Trailborn uh, has some wonderful features and um, types of information that you don't necessarily need in alignment. The only reason I'm doing this is so I have a little bit more control over variation, direction, right? So if I turn that off, look, it's nice and uh, it aligns the right way. Trailborn is great. So I can add some variation, right? Um, so that's that's a that's a nice, nice feature. Anyway, moving on. So we have an alignment that is optional, but I like to use it for variation purposes and any other type of control I want to access. Uh, next up is, uh, let's add some, um, let's see. I'm going to add a velocity operator here. Uh, right now we've got them uh, being created. But what I want to do is add just a little bit more uh, of an organic look. So we're going to go direction direction on my velocity. Okay, it should be good here and then just add some variation. So what's going to happen is we give it some speed. You can see it's going to move with the motion of the cone guy to like 50. Now it's obviously not what we want, but we need to obtain, we need to create that, that information. I want to give it some velocity and I'll show you what the reason is. All right, so yeah, they're moving all over the place, but, and uh, you know, this is annoying. Let's flip these things here. Uh, let's do, can I? access it here turn off this guy turn
turn off the variation. Yeah, there we go. Invert. I want to point it this way. Okay. So we got them moving this way. Okay. Next up is da, 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 da. we're gonna make we're gonna make and go to system. Hit another um, whoop, group. Do control D. We're gonna do underscore anim for animation. We're gonna make two dynamic sets. The first one is uh, grow. That's where we're gonna grow the actual shape. And the second one is slow, grow and slow. So let's start with the slow, all right? Uh, we need to get the spikes, okay? So what I wanna do is create a rule that says, all right, when you start to move in any direction, I want you to immediately start slowing down just to give it some, some uh, nice initial motion. So let's do spikes. We want we need an egg timer. And let's do, uh, we need to do a particle data here. Particle data operator, okay. We need to access the on and the velocity. All right, so let's do, and then I wanna say, I need a threshold, okay. Let's do, let's get our age output. I need to access that age, and I want it to say, you know, after, you know, pretty much instantly. So let's do 0.02 of a frame. So that's subsampled, right? Uh, speaking of which, let's just go to back here. Let's do half frame. It's more accurate here. All right. So after, you know, almost immediate birth, but that's, again, I want to keep it so it's controllable. I want to start the timer. Uh, let's select here, hit single. Let's zero this out and then access the frames input. All right. And then let's, uh, we got a couple things to create here because uh, this kind of fade out is a little bit tricky, but it's pretty cool how it works here. All right. So first off, we will need a uh, value to time value to time this is a very incredible node here right we need to get the value to input uh, first value is gonna be input to time All right, value two is out oh, right so let's get a random node particle particle let's rename this frames Switch that to animation. No, that's sorry, guys. Let's get a float node. Let's do uh, frames. Frames there. So these are our frames. Uh, value two, right? So we're gonna select the. Uh, yeah, let's do. Let's select the stops here. Uh, put this to a large number doesn't really matter too much but uh, and then just zero that out value two is it's gonna be accessed here so all right we need a curve so we're gonna do float and then let's name this um, fade out okay we're, we need to keyframe this value from uh, the value one to zero right so let's just do one right so we get a keyframe just put a value in there and the and then and then then just select your TP. Open up your um, track view. Okay. So what we need to do is it doesn't matter. It doesn't need to be in the timeline of choosing, right? In your <clears throat> in your area of your timeline, it just needs to start at, at zero and needs to uh, extend to a a frame of choosing, right? So right now, since I created a keyframe, it automatically made a value of one at this time stamp. It's 1023, right? And then how Max does it auto key it creates a frame at zero, right? The first frame, zero value at zero, which is a bit annoying, but kind of, you know, that's how it is. But anyway, 
So what we want to do is take that first keyframe and we want to make give it a value of one. Take the net the keyframe we just made. We need to give it a value of zero, right? Um, and then we need to place it at a let's say 30 frames, right? So the idea is I want to slow down these. I want I want to take these these points, these particles, and slow them down within a certain range, right? And I don't, it's not necessarily doesn't mean, now making, a, now the 30 frames I just made, zero to, or one to zero within 30 frames doesn't necessarily mean I'm going, that's, that's the frame range I will be using, 30 frames, because I can control that with uh, the logic that I will, I will move forward with building. But all I need is, is some kind of frame range, you know, give or take between 20 and 50 frames or so that I can just then exploit, right? So let's just, uh, you know, make a nice little curve here. So just think of it as here is things moving at 100%. And this is the animation curve that it will, it will not have it slowed down to, right? So you can animate it or design it however you want. Just gonna make a nice simple zero to one. It's kind of a nice ease in to zero, right? So that's what we got. We have our fade out here that's animated, right? So we have that information set. Not have to do any more of that. So we want to create the output of time. We need to um, access the fades time input. And then this is gonna control when this fade out will happen. All right, all right, let's move forward. Let's move forward, guys. Time is a ticking. Here we go. Let's get, uh, we need some expressions here. Uh, all right, all right. We need to, uh, da, da, da. we need a, we need some vectors here. We're going to just do a nice little simple, uh, let's do unit. At output, we need a vector, and then uh, let's just name it uh, unit v. Okay, and then we need an input at input v1. Okay, I need to access the velocity. Okay, basically, this is just saying, all right, I need to grab the velocity, and then I'm going to use this fade out to determine how long based on the value to time and these frames it's going to take for me to slow down based on this fade out. So I can, it's, this is like, Oh, I'm going to take, uh, I'm going to take all this data and I'm going to, to um, um, I'm going to exploit it and then um, do some maths and, you know, apply my, uh, my goodness. Uh, we need another expression. Here, I'm gonna need. Da, 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 we need um. We need a vector input. So this is the vector, and then we need a uh, scalar. I'm gonna name this S, vector scalar. This is output vector, and this is the scalar input. And the expression is um. We can do scalar times vector. So it's going to take the velocity, multiply it by the um, fade out, and then uh, apply it to. Oh yeah, we need an output output vector. Let's just name this uh, v speed. Right, the, the velocity. Right. So that's all good and, and dandy, but we have to then tell it to turn off or uh, turn on, turn off the actual data. So that would need, uh, let's just do the running. Um, it's running to on particle data. And that should be good, except we didn't apply any frames. So uh, let's say, let's give it a large value so it can run over that as long as it can. 
All right, so we're going to need to move this around here. Uh, we need to add a couple more. Actually, before I throw that in there, let's get a math note here. I need to multiply. Let's do float the float and multiplication. We need to multiply um, uh, the velocity and multiply. I need a float here to control the to the value here and name this multiplication um, and throw this in here and then disconnect this and put it in here. Okay, so now we should see. Boom, I should see this stuff moving a bit and then slowing down, right? Let me turn off orient here for a minute. Uh, alignment here, all right. Right? <clears throat> so you see that moving in a certain number of frames and it fades out, so multiplication, I can uh, change it to multiply. I can move this up, I'm gonna move faster, slower, all right? So we have control of which way it's going, negative, spit stuff out so you can make like a rocket and freeze it. That's cool. But we want to create a sense of it's, it's making, it's moving in the same direction. Put it like, Three-ish, 2.5, let's do 2.5, that's good. All right, so we got that set and ready to go, all sweet and dandy. Um, cool. I'm gonna turn this back on, turn down the variation just a bit. I don't even have any. All right. All right, we got that good to go. That's sweet. All right, now, now here's the cool part. All right, so we got the shape here. All right, um, with the grow, now let's start to make this thing grow. So as it appears, right now it's they're just it's just appearing on screen. But I wanna I wanna take each and every point and have it grow. Um, in a certain direction over a certain amount of time. So again, let's access these spikes here. Let's do an egg timer. Uh, we just throw both those in there like that and zoom out a bit. Um, and we need a scale. All right. So this is gonna be the guy that we tell to um, grow at a certain amount of speed and time and, and uh, frame length, right? Uh, and so we're going to need again, we're going to go back to the slow, we're going to take the fade out, we're going to copy it, control copy, and paste it, right? So this will be uh, fade in, right? That'll be our, our uh, growth. Uh, keep this up here, keep this right here, because we're going to end up using X, Y, and Z. Right. All right. We need to get another value to time. All right. Let's do the value to the time egg timer. We have to access that. So that that's the main um, the main attribute driving this this uh, operation here. Um, again, let's uh, turn the stops on. And we need to put this time into here and then fade in. Uh, just for, let's just connect all these just so we can debug this thing, okay? Um, let's see, okay, so fade in is fading out right now. So we need to reverse that. So we got our two keyframes here, fade out and fade in. So let's go to fade in, go back down to here into our graph change this to zero and yeah you guessed it um one 
right? And you can even make some interesting, right? So if you can imagine that this, this is the, the zero point of, of the birth scale of each spike. And you can, you know, you can only, you can use your imagination and create and design this curve to how, how fast or jittery or, or quick or slow you want this to, uh, to, to animate in. So I'm just going to go like, oh, oh, it's, it's struggling and then coming up here. And now it's, uh, I made too much here. Okay. And there. All right. So that's like a kind of a sporadic curve here. Let's make this at zero. Right, so it's not perfect. This is kind of like how it grows in. Close that. Save it here. Let's get in perspective here. See what this looks like already. <gasps> oh, it's disappearing. It's happening. I'll fix that. But here we go. Oh, I think it's, is that the grow? All right, so now it is um, accessing this stuff. Let's let's play with value to time. Um, let's put this at like thirty. I think since we have this at the going the, this fade in doing thirty frames, we have to kind of match this the time too. So make sure it, this 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 value and the the distance that this curve travels line up. Um, and. Uh, Value two, we need to get another random in here because that'll apply a random throughout each particle that's growing in. Okay, do like between 10 and 90, might be good. Always put the animation, let's collapse that. Put this to single, um, and then make sure the timer is like kind of a large arbitrary number. And we need one more value that we one more input to time two. Again, nice random. Um, that's going to be animation. Let's do like eighteen to seventy-five. All right. Let's see how this looks here. Why isn't this working? Oh, jeez, because I had this off. Okay, this was off. All right, check it out. All right, so we got this these spikes growing in, nice and interesting. Like, all right, so that's cool. All right, we got these grown in. Now let's add some more detail back in. Go to our trail born. Two. All right, we got we got some progress here, man. So you can see the uh, the. The animation of the spikes represent the curve. So again, use your imagination. Design that curve however you want, and um, you get it to look interesting. Uh, let's go back to orient. Da, da, da. Let's kind of adjust the axis, the orient a bit. All right. And again, any t any anywhere this thing is is uh, headed, it's going to correlate the the uh, direction. Again, let's do some uh, nice, oh, man, look at that, dude. Look at that, man. I can get this thing growing. Take this guy, oh, move it wherever you want. Ooh, yeah. Wherever you want. So that's working really nicely. What's next, guys? What's next? Now, 
what we're gonna do is we're gonna make oh yeah let's do this let's add in the rest of our emission guys here so add the cones okay we're gonna pick cone one to three let's uh, reorder these guys here okay so this is all of them object particle and do one to one two 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 three three and then you know four is there you go it's in shape all right so check this out check this out turn off the cones boom look at that oh, that's so awesome so we got this thing growing like a beast like a mother right let's get our control curves here it's just so so freaking cool to watch man got this thing growing and then i could take this control here i can move it wherever i want oh yeah that's so cool man okay so you can start to see how this thing is working now so here's what everything follows and i could take this guy and you know move it however i want guys this main ring that's the controller so you could see how critical it is to build a foundation for this thing to move around so look at i can move it wherever i want everything follows i do not have to right i can put this here i can take this I'll put this over here i can make this like that i can boom boom i'm it's biblical all right like check that out this is what i created um if you can just imagine using this using that system in this create a nice little spline um layout with camera all right guys we're gonna make this a little bit more interesting looking we're gonna change the shape the shape of these spikes here um let's get our layer out uh, let's make a new layer let's just name this um 05 um sh shapes right or you know what more specific instant geo instant geo all right so we got this let's go make our cone we're gonna make a cone, cone, cone. Oh, let's first. Um, sometimes this gets a little bit wonky. Go to master dynamic, turn that on, or just turn off TP altogether. All right, make this nice and simple. We want some uh, generic. We we just want to uh, um, we want to break up that that shape here. So turn off smooth. Uh, let's do, let's see, four, three, six, All right? Let's put this about like you know, 15, zero radius and 55, All right? So then we're going to do a noise, turn on fractal, let's throw a seat on there, uh, 1.3. Three, I think something like this, yeah. Change the seed. So we just want this cool little irregular um faceted uh cone spike here. So let's take it, shift drag it, uh, and then we're just gonna change the seed here. Um and making sure they're faceted is pretty important because if you've seen um, the shape of the cones and the uh, the, the spikes on the, sp the uh, previous spline that I made uh, from the beginning, it's uh, it, the faceted shapes really brings out that that um, that kind of ice ice spike look. So take the cone, just gonna raise the height a bit here. All right, just gonna change the scale. Let's 
let's do like three again. Let's give some gnarly uh, 2.5. Get the Y, just kind of fiddle around with this. Doesn't have to be, you know, it could just be whatever. Shrink this down. So you can see what I'm doing, just just taking it. Uh, and I'll probably just do one more. Get this thing a little bit higher like that. That noise is pretty gnarly. All right. So material, you know, doesn't have to get any fa anything. Yeah. Nothing fancy. Something um, nice and flat shaded, but you can take this however you want. I'm just going to do some blue here and kind of like just a basic white diffuse. Those in there. All right. So we got our, we got some really basic cone shapes here. Okay. And let's make... Um, Underneath cache zero, another set shape. And I think we can, you know, we can go in here and turn off the uh, standard shape and probably get rid of the size here. We can control it here. So we'll get our A spikes. And let's do a geo instance. Wait, Geo, what is it? Man, I'm Geom instance. Let's pick these guys. Size. And let's see what this looks like. Let's turn off this, turn on TP. Super tiny. I'm gonna raise this up here. Actually, we might be able to yeah, probably leave the size up here because we've defined it how, how we wanted to and up here. So we'll just leave that on and we'll get rid of this. Uh, we'll just take this, you know, cut that here. Paste. Okay. So obviously want these things bigger and they are t flipped the other way. So you can just go to alignment, go invert, switch that direction. All right, we got them. Cool. All right. So that's, you know, that's a lot more of an interesting shape. Let's get these controls start to, I'm going to take this here. So 
put this down like that. Or, you know, I'm just going to leave it flat. Start start designing the... Uh, So yeah, I mean, it's pretty cool. It's flexible. Uh, I, you know, I'd go in, I'd take my time, go in and start to actually uh, really mold the, the uh, animation curves for the, uh, the grow in, you know, this guy, uh, probably shorten it or uh, make it quicker, you know, do throw some very more very throw some more variation in there. Uh, yeah, so it's really kind of uh, up to your interpretation and how, how much you how, how far you want to push it um the actual design of the spikes you can throw in some variation so you could take this pretty far but yeah this is the nice this is a pretty cool foundation for for something like this i think it's a pretty cool setup and pretty cool rig i dig it uh thanks again for watching you guys rock Till next time.